Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my AP Biology or Biology Olympiad prep playlist. In the last video, we discussed carbohydrates. In this video, we're going to be talking about lipids. Lipids are defined by the fact that they are hydrophobic. This means that they don't mix with water or they reject water. Lipids are hydrophobic because they're mostly made up of hydrogen and carbon, which makes them nonpolar. Now, they may contain a few oxygen atoms, but they mostly consist of hydrocarbons. Today, we're going to be looking at three types of lipids. Fats, phospholipids, and steroids. All right, let's get started. First, let's talk about fats. Fats are not polymers because they're made up of two subunits instead of one identical and repeating monomer. These two subunits are joined through a dehydration synthesis reaction. Now the two subunits that make up a fat are glycerol and fatty acids. Glycerol is an alcohol. It's this blue molecule on the left over here. And a fatty acid is basically a hydrocarbon chain, meaning a chain of hydrogens and carbons, with a carboxyl group attached to the end of it, which I drew on the left over here. A carboxyl group is COOH. So you have the CO, O, and H. Now let's look at how a glycerol molecule and a fatty acid bond through dehydration synthesis. So what happens is the hydroxyl on the fatty acid and the hydroxyl on the glycerol molecule combine to form a water molecule and an extra oxygen. Now the water molecule leaves and it leaves this oxygen to bind both the molecules. So what ends up happening here is instead of the hydroxyl group on the glycerol, you substitute that with the extra oxygen and you add the fatty acid to the end of that. So you add your hydrocarbon chain. And this is what that ends up looking like. Now to create a fat, you need three fatty acids to bond to each of the hydroxyls on the glycerol. This is why fats are also called triglycerides or triglycerols. Fatty acids can be put into three categories. We have saturated fatty acids, unsaturated fatty acids, and trans fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are saturated with hydrogen atoms. This means that the carbon atoms in this molecule are bonded to as many hydrogens as they can. This also means that there are only single bonds in this molecule. So this is what a saturated fatty acid would look like. You have your carboxyl group and your hydrocarbon chain. This is basically the same fatty acid we've been looking at throughout this video. Now this fatty acid is straight, meaning it can be tightly packed, and this allows it to be a solid, which is why saturated fats are usually solid. These are animal fats, like butter, for example, is a saturated fat. Next, unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fatty acids are not saturated with hydrogen atoms. This means that the carbon atoms are bonded to fewer hydrogen atoms than they could be bonded to. In unsaturated fatty acids, there is a double bond in the carbon skeleton. This leads to the molecule being bent. So this is what the molecule would look like. You have your carboxyl group again, and you have your carbon skeleton. There's your double bond, and that causes this bent shape over here.
Now, because these molecules are bent, they can't be packed as tightly together, which makes them liquids. Now, these fats are usually plant fats, like sunflower oil or vegetable oil. Unsaturated fatty acids or unsaturated fats are more healthy than saturated fats. Now, lastly, we have trans fats. These are basically unsaturated fats like vegetable oil that have been hydrogenated, meaning hydrogen atoms have been added to these unsaturated fats. Trans fats are even more unhealthy than saturated fats. Trans fats and saturated fats can contribute to diseases like atherosclerosis. In atherosclerosis, plaque coats the insides of blood vessels and impedes blood flow, leading to heart problems, lung problems, and organ failure. Next, we're going to be looking at phospholipids. In a phospholipid, you still have your glycerol molecule. Except this time, the glycerol molecule is only attached to two fatty acids. The third hydroxyl on the glycerol is actually bonded to a phosphate group, which is PO4, 3 minus. Now the phosphate group in this molecule is polar, and the hydrocarbon chains are nonpolar. This means that both ends of the molecule react differently in water, while the hydrocarbon ends reject water or repel water because they're hydrophobic, the polar head or the phosphate has an affinity for water. So when phospholipids are added to water, they automatically arrange themselves to form something called a bilayer, which looks like this. Say these purple dots are the polar heads, they arrange themselves on the outsides because they like water. Meanwhile, the yellow lines, which are fatty acids, arrange themselves inside so they can be away from the water because they're hydrophobic. This is called a bilayer because you have two layers of phospholipids. Our cell membranes are made up of phospholipids. And because our body is mostly water, the phospholipids form this same bilayer around our cells. Lastly, let's look at steroids. Now, there's not really much you need to know about steroids. All you need to know is their structure. Steroids are composed of carbon rings. Which looks like this. Again, there's not really much you need to know. You just need to know how to identify steroids when you're given a molecule. And they just look like rings. Now, different chemical groups are attached to steroids, and that's what makes each steroid different. Some examples of steroids would be estrogen, testosterone, or even cholesterol. And that's all you need to know about lipids. If this video helped, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. As usual, I have linked these notes and a checklist of everything you need to know so that you can review in the description box. And that's all. Good luck studying. Bye!